Hey friendlies, it's Carolyn and welcome back to my RV life. Over the winter when I was in Quartzsite, Arizona, being the snowbird that I am in the winter, <laughs> I got uh, solar installed on my new RV and I've been promising you for months now that I was going to share with you what I did, the new solar setup on my new 24 foot Winnebago Itasca Spirit. And uh, so today I'm going to go through and I'm going to show you what I got. I'm really excited about it. I'm happy too that I've been living in it for a few months now. I think I got it done in February, maybe March. I don't know something like that and it is now April so I think I've had it for a couple of months now uh, so I'm gonna walk you through I'm gonna show you what I did but I'm also gonna take this opportunity to explain RV electrical because I know for me trying to understand how my RV electrical system ran was one of the most scary things in the beginning and even like throughout the first year still kind of trying to figure out you know the battery power versus shore power how the outlets work versus inverters and converters and what a controller is so I'm gonna make it super super I mean super easy for you today to understand and how RV electrical works. I mean, seriously, I'm gonna break it down to, um, what's it, bare tacks, bare tins and tacks, I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna um, break it down into bare bones for you just to give you an idea or at least a starting place. And then if you wanna get all fancy about amperage and voltage and you know all the other technical stuff that a lot of the more techie electrical people wanna get into, then you can do that. But right now, I'm just gonna get you started with enough information that you would need forever to live in your RV. So I'm gonna just really, really break it down and and make RV electrical like super simple for you to understand so that anybody who is moving into an RV or already lives in an RV like I did can understand how your RV electrical works. Whether you've got solar, whether you're boondocking and using a generator, whether you're plugged in and using shore power. Okay, so let's get started. First, we're gonna go back in time a few months and we'll show you how the whole process started. Let's go. to make an appointment to get my solar situation straightened out finally. I want to get um, another 200 mounted on my roof and then I want uh, extension cord plugs for uh, at least 300 watts, I think, of flexible panels that I can move around if I want to park in the shade. Right. So we'll go, we'll make an appointment, see how much everything is going to cost. I want to really get it done right and um, everything I've heard about Discount Solar says they're the ones to uh, get it done right. Oh, did I also mention I fried my my 200 watt Renogy solar panels by um, reversing the polarization, which is a really long story, but yeah, uh -huh. did not make me happy. Okay, okay. here in Quartzsite, Arizona, check out where I am. Finally getting solar installed on the roof of Phoenix and uh, there's a loud truck, so I'm gonna move. And uh, I'm really excited. So uh, here's the setup. I'm getting 160 watts put on the roof. I came in and said I wanted 200 on the roof, but they had a 160 watt panel that worked better. So I'm getting 160 mounted on the roof in addition to the 100 I have up there. And they're doing uh, three plug and plays so that I can have 300 watts. And the plan is to do 300 watts of solar that I can uh, move around on the ground outside the RV and really give a shout out to these guys. Uh, of course, we're not done yet, and I'll get into the more of that later, but they spent an hour with me this morning really going through the rig, checking everything out, um, asking me what I wanted, inspecting the rig to find out what I need, and really making a lot of great recommendations. I'm gonna say, um, if you come to Discount Solar expecting cheap, you're not gonna find cheap, but what you're gonna find is quality. Uh, comes highly recommended of course from Bob Wells of CheapRVLiving.com and I'm gonna say just spending the some time with these guys they've got an electrical engineer um, on staff who helps with the installation and somebody else uh, another engineer so they've got like two engineers they do it right they do everything up to code and of course with the new RV with Phoenix I want everything done right I don't want to skimp 
Uh, I thought about buying panels and going somewhere else and just getting them installed, but I don't want to skimp. Uh, this is my new RV. I plan on having her for a while, and I want to make sure I do things right. Uh, so it's not inexpensive, but if you want it done right, um, it seems to me so far that this is the place to go. Ah, look at that. They probably don't even know I'm here. <laughs> I almost got run over. All right, so uh, we'll take a look at what they're doing, and we'll meet them. Ta-da! And welcome to my new solar setup. I am so excited about my new setup. I was originally going to get another 200 put on the roof, but I opted for 160 because they had a 160 watt panel. So instead of having 200 watt panels installed, which would have cost more for installation, I got one 160 watt panel installed in addition to the 100 watt panel that came with the RV. The 160 watt panel was not inexpensive and part of the reason is because it was made in the United States. It's a US made as opposed to the Chinese made that I have on the roof now and that most of the really cheap inexpensive solar panels are made and I've got all this information from the, the guys at, at Discount Solar. They told me that watt for watt I'm gonna get more bang for my buck out of the 160 watt US made panel than I'm gonna get out of the Chinese, the China made panel. He said they're made better and studies have shown, these are his words, studies have shown that you don't really, on a 100 watt panel not made in the United States, you're not getting, you're not really getting 100 watts of solar and that the US ones are made better and that I bought a 160 watt panel and I'm actually gonna get 160 watts. That's what they said. And uh, again, Discount Solar came highly recommended and they had so many engineers on staff and they seemed to really know what they're talking about. So I trusted them. Did I pay a little bit more? Yeah, I did, but I believe in paying for quality and these guys really seemed to know what they were doing and I don't mind paying for quality. I would rather pay a little bit more and know that it's done right than to skimp on price and always have to wonder and second guess which is which I've done and it never pays for me there have been times when I've skimped or when I've tried to save a few bucks and and especially when the RV is concerned and then I'm constantly wondering and worrying is it working right is it okay is it gonna break it doesn't seem right it doesn't feel right it doesn't sound right you know all the mechanical issues and everything I had with my old RV and not always necessarily trusting the work that I had done on it uh, I was prepared to pay more to know that it was done right and that's what I did so the uh, 160 watt panel was not cheap at all I'll put it in the captions as usual <laughs> because I can't remember everything before I turn on the camera uh, but yeah this is my new setup check it out so the hundred the hundred watts like I said the 160 watt panel is back there now I have 260 watts on my roof and I'll show you what I have down below I'm really excited about my setup one of the key features of my new solar system that I specifically requested was to have plug and place out here for flexible solar panels. Remember in my video about why I don't mount my solar on the roof? I mentioned in that video that I like having solar panels that I can position anywhere I want so that on a hot day um, I can park in the shade and I can just move the solar panels if I need to and I don't always have to worry about being positioned in the sun with the panels on my roof. So this was the best of both worlds. I got 260 watts mounted to my roof and then I asked for three plug in place so that I can plug in solar panels on the outside and move them around if I have to. Right now I just have a 100 watt flexible solar panel. I want to get another one eventually. I don't really need it right now, uh, but maybe when I get more batteries I will need it. But all I have to do is plug this in, I'll reel it in and show you. <laughs> All I have to do is plug it in and I've got my flexible solar panel to move wherever I want. And I, it's just a preference for me. I like not having it all on my roof. I like being able to park in the shade and I just like the flexibility of that it offers me. And for me, this is a good solution. And if I have another 100 watts, that means that I could just pretty much always park in the shade and always uh, have enough solar throughout the day to keep my batteries charged and my electronics running. So 300, I can put 300 more watts in here with plug and play. And this is what they look like. Okay, that's what they look like. 
and um, they wired this for me. Uh, they said I can get solar panels with this kind of a connection on it. I haven't shopped for those yet. Instead of those other connectors, those, uh, what are they called? Those other connectors are terrible. So I like these much better. There's even better ones than this, I heard, but these are the ones they had and they recommended. I'll put a picture of the ones that come standard with most solar panels up in the, up here. They're terrible. They really are. They're just really hard to undo. They're not quick release at all and they break and they fall apart and they pull apart. So I don't recommend those at all. I re recommend trying to find another solution for your plug and play solar panels. All right. But yeah, I love this setup. I love my new solar setup. I had them install a blue sky controller. They said it was one of the best controllers on the market and I took their word for it. I wanted to get this done right. I plan on having this RV for a while and I really just wanted to make sure everything was done right and up to code and why skimp? I, I, you know, I'm, I don't believe in skimping. I believe you get what you pay for. So I paid a little extra, I think five or $600 for this controller. One of the options was this nice display and they installed this here for me. The controller is actually down below underneath my drawers and cupboards. The, the controller is actually a big box and that was installed underneath my cabinets and my drawers. But they put the display up here for me so that I can easily see the shape of my battery all throughout the day. And you'll see right now my battery is kind of low because I've got things plugged in. It's at about 12.3 volts right now and the solar, my 360 watts of solar on a very cloudy, very rainy day is currently putting in 1.3, 1.2 amps of power. Uh, if, if it was sunny outside, that reading would probably be closer to 13. I think I've seen it as high as 15. I can't remember. I've seen it go pretty high, but right now it's very cloudy. And so I've got the flexible solar panel out. I'm just trying to get as much of the daylight as I can so that I don't have to run the generator as much. Uh, so this is my, my nice little uh, display here that just tells me the health of my battery. It tells me throughout the day what's going in as far as what the solar panels are putting in through the controller. Another thing I liked about the Blue Sky controller is that it's got a power boost. So what they told me is that it'll actually maximize the, the power, the sun power going into my solar panels and put more energy into my batteries. And that was a selling point for me. I figured, I think it was a couple hundred or a hundred extra dollars for the boost. And I thought, why not? If it's gonna, especially on days like today, I really wanna grab as much as I can and feed as much power as I can into my batteries. And I thought that that would be a benefit for days like this and especially when I'm going to Alaska. And so that's the controller. So there's a little bit of a break in the clouds and the rain stuff. So you can see the amps going in um, is getting a little bit higher and the health of the battery is also getting a little bit higher. Uh, so what this means is that when my battery gets too low, usually 12.3 is about as low as I like to get it. That means it's time to turn on the generator. On days like today, when I don't have enough sunshine, that means I'm running the generator more. If it's a sunny day, I, I don't even have to worry about this. If it's a sunny day with my laptop plugged in, with my uh, spare battery, which I'm going to show you in a minute, plugged in with uh, my, my batteries, my, my camera battery being charged, my cell phone getting charged, all the electronics that I need plugged in. I 360 watts of solar is all I need. In fact, I really don't even need that 100 watts that I have. The 260 on a full, bright, sunny day, now that the days are getting longer, is really enough. This is the controller. Shows me how healthy my battery is and it is it is getting more charged now the sun is up at 12.7, so I'm pretty comfortable with it at 12.7. But like I said, if this had stayed uh, you know, at 12.3, and if I was only getting 0.3 in uh, amps in, then it would I'd probably turn on the generator so that I could get the battery back up, especially while I'm working and I've got the laptop on. Okay, so I've kind of shown you the controller. Now, why don't we talk about what the controller does? <laughs> and then the next uh, step in this process is going to be talking about how the controller fits in with the rest of the RV electrical and what an inverter is and what a converter is. I'm going to talk about those two things, which are the keys to keeping a RV electrical running. First, let's talk about your battery and how that keeps your whole RV electrical running and 
what a battery really is. Your battery for running your coach is going to be most likely a deep cycle battery compared to your regular car or engine battery. And the difference between a deep cycle battery and your regular battery that goes in your car engine is that a deep cycle battery is meant to be slowly drained and then slowly charged. Slowly drained and then slowly charged, which is what you're doing as you're living off that battery, right? You're charging it up and then you're slowly draining it. You're slowly, it, it slowly gives off energy to keep things running. A little bit of your refrigerator, your fans, or whatever, to slowly put out energy to keep those things running. A car battery, on the other hand, is meant to give one quick, boom, burst of energy to start the engine. That's it. Boom, burst the engine and then the alternator in your car engine recharges it. So that's it. Boom, big, like, you know, just give me all your energy all at once. That's what an engine battery does. A deep cycle gives you energy, kind of doles it out as you need it. Okay? So that's the difference between the two different types of batteries that you're familiar with. Now, what a controller does is it controls the amount of energy that goes into your deep cycle house coach battery. Why? Because if you put too much energy into the battery, um, either too much all at once, or if you overfloat it, overfill it, just kind of keep putting energy in once it's full, you're going to burn your battery out. You're going to completely fry it. So the controller and you have to have a controller. You cannot, do not hook up your solar without a controller or you will fry your batteries. You need to control, especially with 360 watts on two 12 volt deep cycle batteries, which is what I have right now. Uh, it's really important to make sure you monitor and control how much energy you're putting into the battery so that you can extend the life cycle of the battery. You don't fry it. You want those batteries to last as long as they can. And that means slowly draining, slowly filling up, slowly draining and slowly filling up every single day. That's how you keep your coach battery healthy. And that's what a good controller is going to do. So that's what the controller does. Does that make sense? Controller does exactly what it says it does. It controls the amount of energy that goes into your battery so that you can extend the life of your battery, right? Okay, so I explained controller, I explained a deep cell cycle battery and the, how that runs your coach and the difference between that and an engine battery. Now let's move on to inverters and converters and I'm gonna break it down super simply and let you know what each of those does and what the difference is between the two. And in my RV, the inverter is behind my entertainment center here. And this is what my inverter looks like. They come in a lot of different shapes and sizes. The inverter that I had in my old RV, Matilda, was a Best Tech. And uh, I'll give you the link to that in the description of this video, the Amazon link. The Best Tech. Uh, was just a little one. I think I paid less than $100 for it and it was really easy to install. I did it myself. Uh, but in this one, it already came with one, which is really convenient. And all I have to do is plug in my power strip into the back of it. This video is about making RV electrical as simple and as easy to understand as possible. So I'm just going to give you the bare bones of what an inverter is. I actually did a little bit of research and it's really interesting the story about why our electricity is AC, alternating current, instead of DC, direct current. But I'm not going to fill your head with all of that mumbo jumbo because that's where I got confused when I first started living in an RV. For the sake of making things really simple, this is AC. Anything that you plug into a regular outlet, 120 volt AC, alternating current. That's what AC is. DC, on the other hand, is this, direct current, anything you plug directly into a 12-volt battery. Again, this is just a completely oversimplification of this to help you understand how your RV electrical works. And what we're doing in our RV when we're boondocking and we want to plug in appliances like our laptops, TVs, microwaves, air conditionings, all of those appliances that run on 120 volt. What we want to do when we're boondocking is we want to convert our battery power, our direct current 12 volt battery power into 120 volt alternating current power. So that's what we're trying to do. 
and that's what an inverter does. See, really easy. <laughs> an inverter is hooked up to my battery and it converts direct current power, DC, from my battery into alternating current. And that's why I plug it into the back of the inverter and then I'm able to plug in all of my appliances to the power strip. It's that simple. That's all an inverter does. A converter, a converter, on the other hand, is going to reduce this kind of power, alternating current, 110 or 120 volt alternating power. It's going to reduce this down to 12 volt power when you're plugged in. So why does that matter? Because you have a lot of 12 volt appliances in your RV. All your overhead lights are 12 volt. Your fans are 12 volt. Your refrigerator, if you've got a three-way refrigerator, it's 12 volt. Even though it runs on propane, it's got an electrical switch and that runs on 12 volt. Your water pump runs on 12 volt. So all those things that run off your battery when you're boondocking are 12 volt appliances. What your converter does is it downsizes basically your 120 or your 110 volt power from your shore power source or if you're plugged in and your generator is running from your generator it funnels it down to feed the 12 volt appliances so that's what your converter does your convert your converter is converting 120 or 110 volt shore power or generator power to power all of your 12 volt appliances when you're plugged in so that you're not pulling pulling off your battery and draining your battery. So another way to get power while you're boondocking is through a uh, cigarette lighter attachment. So this is enough power drawn from my coach battery to charge cell phones and things like that. You can also buy a little tiny inverter like this. It plugs into a cigarette lighter, whether the one inside your RV or the one inside your van, and it's got a 110 or a 120 outlet on the other side. It's also got a USB. This will actually act as an inverter and convert your battery power into 110 AC. I've gone through a couple of these. I'm, I not really thrilled with them. After a little while, um, when it's warm, the fans make a lot of noise and they go, rawr, rawr. so, um, you know, they work, but they're, they're pretty noisy. I'm not real happy with them. Uh, I don't even know what the brand is. I'm going to go ahead and put a link in Amazon just in case you want to check it out and see what this is all about. Uh, but yeah, this is what I used a lot in Matilda before I had, uh, you know, a real decent solar setup that was set up right. So in a pinch, this will work. If you need something to plug into a cigarette lighter to run a laptop, this will work. It's not going to run something. I don't even know how many amps it is. It says 2.1 amp USB, but, uh, I'm not really sure. It does run my laptop. Not very long. This is not gonna, this isn't gonna work for a long term, long term, but it'll work in a pinch and it's really inexpensive. I think it was like 20 bucks or 30 bucks or something like that. So I'll put a link so that you can check it out. All right. This actually has a low battery sensor. So when the battery gets too low, it'll automatically shut off. A red light will go on and it'll automatically shut off. So I don't have to worry about the inverter or my things that are plugged into it. Uh, draining the battery. It, it has a safeguard in place so that that won't happen. But this is my inverter. Very happy with it. Just turn it on or off. If I do start getting low, I can just go ahead and turn it off or unplug everything. See that flickered a little bit. So I'm getting a little low on my battery. All right, we've got solar. We have inverters. We have controllers. And still, this doesn't work unless this is plugged in. And this plugs in either to this in here which is your onboard generator. So in order for your outlets inside to work, you have to be plugged into something. You plug into here and you turn on your onboard generator and you have power to your electrical outlets. Or if you're parked in an RV park or you're parked at a friend's house and you have an extension cord or you can plug directly into a house, Oh, that's called shore power. You can plug this directly into shore power and then your outlets will work. If you don't have um, if your onboard generator doesn't work like mine doesn't, and if you're boondocking so you don't have shore power, you can plug it into an outboard generator like mine, but first you might need one of these. It's a connector because you see this is a weird connector 
this will plug into uh, an RV park, a campground, all of the setups for electrical in all of the campgrounds have this kind of hookup. But the generator I don't think does. And if you want to plug into a house or uh, use an extension cord, you're going to need this adapter. And what it does is it plugs into here and gives you just a regular three prong adapter for, uh, for any, any outlet. That's it. The generator would normally be running and warmed up by now, but since I'm just going to show you this for uh, demonstration purposes, uh, you'll see here that it doesn't have the, the prongs that come with the RV plug. So I had to use the adapter. Now I just go ahead and plug it in and that's it. Now my electrical outlets inside the RV have power to them. So, so again, in order for your inside outlets, the actual three prong outlets to work in an RV, you have to be plugged into a 110 or a 120 volt power source. That's either shore power or a generator. You cannot run the electrical outlets, at least not on my RV. I think some of the newer ones maybe are changing, um, but you cannot run most RVs off of your, or you can't run the outlets, the 110 outlets in most RVs off your battery. You have to be plugged into an alternating current AC power source, which is what a generator and shore power provides. Does that make sense? All right. Right now, I'm boondocking. I've got my solar panels out, even in the rain, and my battery is getting charged, so I'm able to turn on the inverter and use the power. Now, in order for the inverter to work, I have to have enough power in my battery, so I need to keep an eye, I'm looking at it right now, I need to keep an eye on my battery. I don't really like it to go, go usually below like 12.5, 12.6, 12.7 while the inverter is on, but it's rainy and I don't really have much of a choice, so I'm draining my battery today a little bit more than I normally would. If I had full sunshine, today the inverter would be on all day I'd be running my appliances I'd be working on my laptop all day and and my battery would be fine today what I'm gonna have to do I'm gonna have to switch this off and use the generator later to power my laptop does that make sense but I want to show you something I got so this um, it's Suoki. This is a portable battery. I love this thing. This company sent it to me, full disclosure. They sent it to me to try out and um, if I liked it to let you guys know about it. And I really, this thing is a lifesaver. Right now, I only have two 12 volt batteries and 360 watts of solar. So I have more solar than my batteries can handle. And it actually by, you know, noon or one o'clock in full sunlight, um, I'm kind of on a float because I can't put any more power into my batteries. When these batteries go dead, I'm gonna up I'm gonna upgrade that. I'm actually gonna get more battery power. So what that means is that I only have two 12 volt batteries. So by the time it's dark, um, I'm already my batteries are already kind of low, and I don't want to drain them too low. So that's where this comes in handy. During the height of sun, when I'm getting the most solar, the most charging into my batteries, I turn on the inverter, I plug this in, and I charge this. Now this, I don't know, it takes a few hours it to charge. It depends to if it's if it's completely empty, it might take four or five hours to charge. But if I have full power on solar, who cares? I just always make sure I plug this in. And then after dark, when I'm not getting solar charging my batteries, instead of depleting my batteries, I use this. So my laptop plugs directly into this. And I can run my laptop, I think, for like four hours. And my ba my laptop takes a lot of energy because of all the editing software and all the other stuff on it. And I can get four hours out of this. So I really like this. I really recommend it. It's got four USB jacks here, so you can plug in and charge cell phones and iPads. It also has 12 DC outlets here, so you can plug other things in. You know, if you have anything that takes plugs like that, it's got a it's got a flashlight on it, which is really cool. If you need, I mean, if you need to go outside with a flashlight and, and it's got a handle on it. Uh, this thing extends my power of what I have in my 12 volt. I pretty much have as much power with this than I could ever need. So this thing is really come in handy and I do recommend it. So that's the brand. And I'm going to go ahead and put a link to that, an Amazon link to that in the description so that you can check it out yourself. Okay.
Okay, that was a lot of information, but I hope that I succeeded in simplifying it for those of you who are a little confused or intimidated by RV electrical systems and how they work like I was at first. Oh my gosh, I remember when I first bought the, my first RV and the guy I bought it from going through and explaining everything and it was extremely overwhelming. I mean, it, it seems like a lot at first. And even for those of you who've been living in your RVs a while and you're wondering about how to get solar hooked up like I was my first year, I hope that I cleared up some of the mystery behind that for you, at least to give you a place to start. I know that I didn't go in depth and I didn't go in depth on purpose because I know for me that um, all the details and too much information and all the uh, the technical stuff really overwhelmed me so that, you know, I was like, la, 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 la. <laughs> you know, once you get too technical, I, on some things that you kind of just have to ease into. And for me, once people started getting too technical, literally like I'd zone out and I didn't hear anything. So I hope that I overcame that in this video for you and didn't cause you to go la, 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 and really helped you to hear it and understand it a little bit better because that was my goal. But I want to recap a couple of things that I know I'm going to get questions on. My solar, for example. Uh, just to recap my setup, I have two 12-volt deep cell marine batteries. Uh, I do want to upgrade that eventually because, like I said... I have more solar right now than my batteries can hold. So I'm wasting a lot of energy. I have 360 watts and I'm wasting a lot of energy. Within a couple hours of full sun, my batteries are full. What I want is more battery power so that I can run longer when I'm not getting power put into it. Does that make sense? So eventually I think I'm gonna switch to golf cart batteries, which I still don't completely understand is a whole other, um, a whole other subject, but right now I've got two 12 volt batteries. I have 360 watt pa watts of power, which is more than enough for two 12 volt batteries to run all of my DC, all of my coach operations, my furnace, my water pump, my refrigerator, my lights, my fans, all the things that run on the battery when I'm boondocking. My 360 watts is more than enough. It probably 260 watts would be enough. And if you don't have to run a laptop all day, I have a high powered laptop that uses a lot of energy because of all the editing software and all the video editing that I have to do. So if you don't have all that 260 watts, or even if you don't have a laptop or a TV at all, you could probably even get away with a hundred watts. Uh, and if you need to start small, make sure you have room to grow like I did with the three plug and plays. I wanted to make sure I had room to grow so that when I do upgrade and get more battery power, I have room to grow without having to spend a whole lot of money and redo everything. Okay, so two 12 volt batteries is what I have. 360 watts of solar is what I have. The total cost for the installation, the labor, and all the parts and everything for my installation through Discount Solar was $1,200. Yeah, that's a lot of money. Uh, like I said, though, I'm, I'm confident that it's done right. It's working really well. I'm very happy with it. And uh, for those of you who are very price sensitive, yes, you can get it done a lot less expensive than that uh, someplace else. I took a recommendation from a friend and... Um, and I'm really happy with what I got. Like I said, with mechanical engineers and, and um, electrical engineers on staff, I'm just really confident that it was done right. And that's important to me. I value peace of mind and I value quality. And in my opinion, peace of mind is priceless. I also got a 30 amp controller, which is, I think, the biggest one I think they made. Again, room to grow. So the 30 amps uh, on the controller is more than enough to handle my 360 watts of solar. I had a 10 amp controller for the for the 100 watt solar that was on the roof. So for those of you who are just starting out and you don't think you need to grow, a 10 amp controller for 100 watts is probably more than enough, maybe even for 200 watts, okay? In addition to that, I explained how RV electrical works. I talked about the inverter, I talked about a converter, I talked about how to make your electrical outlets work, I talked about my spare battery here, which I'm, which is really great. I mean, until I get more more 12 volts or golf cart batteries installed for $139. This really is, I really love this. It really, really helps just extend the life of my power. So 
while I don't have more batteries installed and I'm wasting solar, I feel like I'm wasting solar throughout the day because I don't have the battery power to hold all the solar I have, this actually makes up for it because I am charging this throughout the day. Oh, did I mention you can also charge this by solar and by cigarette lighter. So again, the link to this is in the description. I think that's it. I hope I covered everything. I really hope, I mean, my really, my goal with putting this together and it took, uh, uh it took a lot to put this together because I wanted to make sure my information to you was right and uh, I learned a few things even in making these this video as usual um, I want to hear from you did this help did this clear things up for you is it a little less confusing a little less intimidating or was it more confusing I hope not <laughs> that would really suck if it's actually more confusing and I completely failed uh, I really hope that it's that's not the case and I really hope that it cleared things up for you all right I'm gonna sign off and uh, thank you so much for hanging with me and as usual I just want to thank you all for being here I want to thank you for being a part of my community I want to thank you for all the support that you give me the moral support the comments watching my videos and again just a reminder for those of you who keep asking how you can help me watching my videos all the way through sharing my videos on social media on Twitter on Facebook um, just being here just being a part of my audience are all just really great ways to uh, keep my channel going so that I can keep making videos like this to help people. That's really what my goal is. Um, with helping people with practical information as well as motivation, inspiration, and um, just being the cautionary tale that I sometimes am. <laughs> I'll see you next time. In the meantime, be happy, be free, and be kind. Mwah. See you soon. Oh, the obligatory Capone, right? There he is. Hi, buddy. Hi, buddy. What do you think? Say bye!